uh, good afternoon. I'm Ted Gunderson. I apologize for my hoarseness. Uh, I was uh, interviewed for three hours yesterday straight, and I talked for three hours straight. So <laughs> I'm a retired FBI chief. I was in the FBI for 27 years. Retired uh, March 30, 1979. Uh, I've been out 30 years, and I've been a private investigator. California license 12878. Well, 911 is obvious. Everybody knows about that. Uh, but Oklahoma City, uh, it was, uh, to, for them to say that that was a fertilizer bomb in that truck is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they blew up stumps in the, in, in the farmyard of, uh, with fertilizer bombs. And uh, that was a, uh, what we call electro-hydrodynamic gaseous fuel device. When that occurred, I had a call from Mike Reconosuto, my friend, he's a CIA uh, scientist for 20 years. Michael said that that was, quote, my bomb. Not that he made that bomb, but that was a bomb that he designed. And uh, it was, uh, when it was uh, uh, first set off in the desert in Area 51, it was so powerful, they underestimated the, the power of it. One of the scientists died and another one was injured. They had no idea how, uh, what, how a, a dynamically strong it was, and how powerful it was. And that was, and it's a directional bomb, by the way. And uh, for them, for the government to say, and you've seen pictures of Oklahoma City, the whole building was half a moon. It was torn down, it looked like a half a moon. For them to say for life, bomb did that is absolutely ridiculous. And what I did, and, and I have a, a, a CD, uh, it's uh, with uh, 6,500 pages of my reports, 52 reports, including Oklahoma City. And what I did is in my research, I, I, in talking to Mike Reconosuto, I found the contract number for the bomb in a scientific magazine. And I wrote to uh, Picatinny Arsenal in New Jersey. Here's the contract number. I'd like to have a copy of the contract. This is all public source information. They can't keep that from you. They wrote back and they said, there's no such contract. And I had the contract number. And they to this day claim there's no such contract. Okay. So there was a contract. Now, that afternoon, there were four TV stations in Oklahoma City that covered it. And all, and I've got these, by the way, I've got these broadcasts. All four of these stations said, oh, they're bringing bombs out of the building. And then in September, one of them said, we're going to find out who's behind this now because one of them has U.S. Army stencil on it. Okay? And in the September magazine, Fireman's Magazine, and there was an article about Oklahoma City written by the editor. And he attributes the information in the article to the, the uh, Oklahoma City Fire Department. And in there he names the time, he had a timeline, the time they brought the four bombs out. These are four conventional bombs. That building was meant to be destroyed completely. Okay. The barometric bomb, uh, which was the hydro, electro hydrodynamic gaseous fuel device, was to go off first, followed by the conventional bombs on the inside. The conventional bomb didn't go off for some reason. So, uh, and uh, this is all documented. Um, now, uh, Terry Nichols, who's one of the co-defendants in Oklahoma City, is in prison here in Utah, I understand. And he's re recently submitted an affidavit wherein he names Larry Potts, number two man in the FBI, as having been the person who orchestrated it. Uh, there was a, 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 a practice run, apparently, or a, a, a accumulation of some of these people involved in the planning for the Oklahoma City, and I think it's Oklahoma City, a guy down named Oklahoma City, and uh, uh, there's a fellow named Strassmeyer, who was uh, from Germany, and he was brought over here specifically by the U.S. Department of Justice to act as an informant. He, he was in Alamo City on a regular basis. McVeigh was in Alamo. Uh, so uh, McVeigh was in this camp. 
Uh, there was also a, um, a young lady in the camp, and she was an informant for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. And I uh, forget the details, and I forget her name offhand, because it's been years uh, since I was involved in the case or investigated it. It's in my report. And afterwards, the government tried to prosecute her, and they actually had a trial. And she was acting as an informant for the BATF. And they tried to claim to say that she was involved in it. I think she was acquitted, though. But uh, uh, McVeigh and Terry Nichols, and um, absolutely no question, there's a huge cover. That's just one example of Oklahoma City. So, uh, well, why? The question is why. As a result of 9-1, first of all, in Oklahoma City, there, there wasn't enough uh, damage or enough deaths to, quote, wake up America, so to speak, as to the terrorist attack. So they, along came 911. And what happened after 911? Homeland Security, the Patriot Act, I call it the Terrorist Act, by the way, that takes away many of our constitutional rights and civil liberties. I mean, huh? and we got I, let, let, me tell you, let me talk about McVeigh, okay? Uh, McVeigh was mind control. No question about it. Jesse Trenadu, his cellmate, um, actually testified to his brother, uh, Ken Trenadu, a lawyer here in Salt Lake City, of that very fact. Man, he was murdered, wasn't he? No, he's still alive. Was he still alive? Oh, wait, no. He, he was murdered, wasn't he? Yeah, he was murdered. See, trying to do, that's why I can't try he to was murdered in Oklahoma City Jail. That's right, that's right. That's right. And he was beat to a pulp. And I, I don't know what they said. They said he committed suicide or something. You know? They keep getting away with this. But McVeigh uh, was, uh, uh, he was the Lee Harvey Oswald of Oklahoma City. Lee Harvey Oswald was a, a, a puppet in the Kennedy assassination. Or a patsy. A patsy. Uh, he was mind control, no question about it, in my opinion. You know, I can't prove it, but he was. Um, and then here, here comes uh, McVeigh, Timothy McVeigh, okay. Uh, he was visited in jail when he was incarcerated in Oklahoma by Dr. Lewis Jolly West. Dr. West was one of the original operators and organizers and administrators of the CIA mind control program. Dr. West also visited McVeigh secretly when he was incarcerated in Colorado. Now why would Dr. West, who was involved with CIA mind control, MK Ultra? visit a man in Oklahoma and in Colorado, why would he do that? Unless the man was himself mind control. He wrote a letter, McVeigh wrote a letter to his sister, and it was in the Dallas Morning News, and I have a copy of it someplace, but I've had so many of my files stolen by the, these guys, surreptitious entries. He wrote a letter to his sister and said that he'd been recruited by the CIA to be a, a, an assassin and also to work on the CIA, Mike, and, uh, CIA uh, drug operations. That was in black and white in the paper. McVeigh was a patsy. And I think uh, Terry Nichols uh, is basically